This is Philosophy 6 at Las Positas College. I thought I would spend some time going over the MindTap assignment for Module 6.1. The assignment is doable, but you're learning both the logic here and how to navigate would help. So I thought maybe an example of one of the more difficult problems might make you feel a bit more comfortable with solving these. So the first few questions here, actually the bulk of these questions, Hurley is teaching you at the same time that he is testing you on these problems. I am with these problems going to go into MindTap and try to set this so that what gets counted for your score on the question is your best take, your best score for that question. And because these problems are difficult, you're kind of learning as you go along, that might uh, be a better choice for a situation like this. So these first problems that you are going to do, these are really just teaching you at the same time that they are testing you. And so I don't think you'll have too much difficulty with these, especially given that you have additional takes. But maybe I'll go down to some of these practice translations and work one of the harder of these practice translations with you. So here's an example from question 13, Difficult Translations, Part 2. And here is the complex statement that you're being asked to translate. The statement is, if today is Independence Day or today is Veterans Day, then today is a national holiday in the United States. Uh, so this comma here is going to be an in, a good indicator for me that there is a separation between two ideas that are being put forward. Maybe I can just start marking this up. So if today is Independence Day, that's I. So if today is Independence Day, we have the if and we have a then. So if today is Independence Day or, so I know that's going to be the wedge, today is Veterans Day, that's V. So this first part is I or V, but then there's an if-then here. So I can tell that if I or V, then today is a national holiday, which is just N. So if I or V, then N. And I can put that in here, making sure to include my parentheses. So parentheses, I, or V, close parentheses, then N. Once I think I've got it, I can grade it now. And we got one out of one point. Looks like we got it right. If we didn't like our grade or just for fun, we could try another version. and do it all again. Okay, let's try another. This is an example from question 15. If there is a swine flu epidemic, then infected people are quarantined and the public will panic. And if the latter occurs, then parents do not send their children to school and the employees do not go to work. So. Let's start at the beginning here. If there is a swine flu epidemic, 
that's s. So if s, then infected people are quarantined and the public will panic. So we have our if here, and then we have our then. Both of these things will happen, right? So infected people are quarantined. That is Q. And the public will panic is P. So we have if S, then Q and P. Then we have another and here. And if the latter occurs, which means the latter here is that the public will panic. So, and if P, the public will panic, then parents do not send children to school and employees do not go to work. So we have these two things that will be taken together with the and in between. Parents do not send children to school. Well, C is parents do send their children to school. So this is going to be not C. And employees do not go to work. E is employees go to work. So this is going to be not E. So we have and, if the latter occurs, that was P, then parents do not send children to school. That means not C. And it's not the case that employees go to work either. And these are taken as a unit, right? So that means these will be within parentheses. It's always a bummer when you have a C used in one of these because a C is so easily confused with a parentheses. So I'm just going to put a line here to indicate that this is a C as a number rather than a parentheses. So this looks pretty good so far, but you can see that I have left so far an ambiguity in here. I have too many sentence letters that it's left ambiguous if what I'm saying is if S, then Q and P and P, then this, or if I'm saying if S, then Q and P, and if P, then not C and not E. So clearly it's the latter, right? If there is a swine flu epidemic, then the infected people are quarantined and the public will panic. And, so that will be my main connective, if the latter occurs, that's if P, then not C and not E. So I am going to need some brackets to indicate that this is going to be taken as a whole, and also that this is going to be taken as a whole. And now I'm left with nothing that's ambiguous. And if I check this in the mind tap, it should turn out to be correct.